uh, the oxygen family. Uh, so these are. This also has another name. Does anybody know the name of this family? Like halogens has a name. Calcogens, CH. Uh, this oxygen commonly will form O2. That's its elemental form as a gas, and O3 is a gas, which is ozone. Uh, O2's molecular structure, and you can, or Lewis structure, you can practice this at home, it looks like that. O3 is like this, pretty similar. as a resonance structure is what I'm drawing right here. Okay, let's look at the one on the right for a minute. The ozone. Uh, so these are resonance structures. What's the shape of this electronically? Trigonal. Trigonal. Uh, what's the uh, molecular shape? That's bent. That's right. Okay. What's the uh, formal charge right here? Uh, it's in column six. Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. How about this one? Plus one. One, two, three, four, five. That'd be plus one. How about this one? Minus one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's minus one. Are we okay with this structure? Yeah, it's not going to get any better than this. So I'll mark all the non-zero formal charges uh, so we can see them. Uh, that's pretty good. That's a good Lewis structure. Okay. Uh, let's just, let me say a little bit about ozone. O3, when it receives UV radiation, that's what it protects us from. Uh, and we write that in the form of H nu. Uh, that equals energy. So you took, you'll see that in some classes. What it does is uh, when uh, it interacts with the UV radiation, it turns into O2 plus elemental oxygen. So it absorbs that energy. And then that O2 plus oxygen uh, goes back, straight back to ozone. And then that energy is released, but not as UV radiation that burns my skin that turns me from pale to pink, but it uh, is released in terms of kinetic energy, energy to the nitrogen in the air. So that's how it protects us. Uh, it turns it from UV into the kinetic energy and it's not as harmful for us. Unless you live in Australia and you got a hole in the ozone layer, then you're messed up. Oxygen has three common oxidation states. What's the most common for oxygen? Minus two. What are the other ones? Minus one and zero. So this one is, is pretty normal, the most common. This one you see for peroxides. You ask, what's a peroxide? Well, a common one to bleach your hair is H2O2. That's peroxide. Whenever you have two oxygens in a row, it's called peroxide. And this is for elemental oxygen. Okay, so those are the common oxidation states. Let's talk a little bit about sulfur. Sulfur. Sulfur is stinky. Okay, sulfur is found in reserves in Texas and Louisiana. Uh, the, if you ever have smelled a skunk smell, that nastiness, that's sulfur. If you've smelled, uh, what else would you see sulfur in? Uh, Rotten eggs, that's sulfur. In fact, that yellow color is pretty common of sulfur. You shouldn't do this, but if you've ever seen it, if you take a tire and you throw it in the fire, it will turn burning yellow, bright yellow. And that's from the sulfur. Tires are made out of sulfur. It's called vulcanized or rubber. And that sulfur uh, is a helpful bond uh, in rubber. Uh, the elemental form of sulfur is S8. So S8 elemental uh, is its form. 
Uh, sulfur is another common use that you've known already, sulfuric acid. Um, we also have problems with uh, sulfur emissions that pollutes our environment. Uh, if you have an emission of SO2 and NO2, which are common emissions from various processes, cars, factories, whatever, that will react to form SO3 and NO. SO3 is the real problem because when this reacts with uh, H2O uh, in the air, like water vapor, for example, that will form H2SO4. What's that? I know it's sulfuric acid, but in the atmosphere it's acid rain. And the acid rain uh, slightly lowers the pH of rain, uh, and uh, it can be harmful in a number of circumstances. One, kind of, one example would be for buildings that are made out of marble or some sort of carbonate, it'll break down those buildings or statues or whatever over time. Uh, other applications of sulfur, SCl2 plus two ethylenes, so this is a two, CH2CH2, forms SCH2CH2Cl2. Anybody know what that is? That's mustard gas. Mustard gas. That was used in World War I. Uh, if you use this gas like chemical war warfare, uh, it'll start causing you to blister. Then you'll bleed. Then you'll go blind. And after about a month, you'll be dead. So watch out for that. Don't eat it. Don't put it on your hot dog. Uh, Selenium, tellurium, uh, these are semiconductors. They can be used as alloys, uh, and they can be used to color glass. So semiconductors, alloys, coloring glass, etc. Polonium, it's radioactive and, and really has no use. So that's the very bottom one on your periodic table right down here. Um, and so, in general, a lot of reactions you've seen are just pure oxidation reactions. Uh, and oxidation is what some people think causes aging. So, but normal oxidations you've seen are like combustion or the fuel cell uh, batteries. 